So I'll give you an example of adding in binary. Um, if we if we have two numbers, say one zero one one zero and zero one zero one zero, um, in a similar way to adding in decimal, you just add each column in sequence. And in binary, zero plus zero is zero, one plus zero is one, zero plus one is one, and one plus one is zero with a carry of one. Um, so you can just use those to complete the whole sequence. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry of 1. Um, and just like in decimal, with the carry, you just add it on. So 1 plus 1 is again 0 with a carry of 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 1 or 0 carry of 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 0 and then your carry of 1. Um, so as you can see, it's the exact same sequence of events as you would with normal uh, numbers. So normally, when we subtract, uh, it's also very similar. So if I subtract in binary, um, example here, Or actually, before showing you subtracting in binary, I'll just refresh your memory because it may have been a long time. Um, subtracting in decimal, uh, in a similar way, we'll be using the idea of borrows. Um, so if 3 minus 7 is too big, you will borrow 1 from there um, and make this 13. So you have to remember the 1 in this case means... Um, 10 to the power 1. We're dealing with a decimal here, or base 10. Um, so it then becomes 13 minus 7 instead of 3 minus 7. So with this, then you can complete the that. Um, again, here, 1 minus 6, you'll borrow 11 minus 6, and that will give you the final result. So that's how you subtract in um, decimal. Subtracting in binary, it's sort of the same idea. So let's Give a number here. Um, so when we want to subtract in binary, how we do it is you go 0 minus 1. Um, so again, we can write down 0 minus 0 equals 0. Uh, 0, or say 1 minus 0 equals 1. Uh, 1 minus 1 equals 0. Um, and 0 minus 1, this is where you need the borrow. So you Um, because, obviously, you can't just do that without getting a negative result. So in this case, 0 minus 1, um, we'll borrow from here, and we'll put a 1 there. So when you're dealing with binary subtraction, the thing you have to remember is that with decimal, this was equal to 10 to the 1. Because it's binary, uh, it's effectively equal to 2. Or you can look at this 1, 0, um, and say binary 1, 0 equals 2, if that's an easier way to remember it. So then you have 2 minus 1 uh, gives you 1. So that's how we deal with the binary uh, borrow operation. So then we're using the borrow there. So then we just keep going as before, 0 minus 0, 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And again, 0 minus 1. Um, we need to borrow from this digit. And if this was a zero, as in with decimal, we would just keep borrowing, keep going along. Um, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 0 is 0. Um, so there you go. So that's a simple example of subtracting in binary. Um, when we do this, we'll also have this issue of both positive and negative numbers. So, obviously, you can do anything. You can go 9 plus minus 2, or 9, negative 9 minus negative 3. And there's all sorts of combinations here. So we need a way to represent um, negative numbers in binary. Everything we've been talking about so far 
has been the case of positive numbers. So when I have the uh, the binary number, I'm saying that um, you know this is equal to two to the zero, this is equal to two to the one, um, this is equal to two to the two. So there's no there's no way to represent something below zero. Zero is it. So one easy way that you might first think of doing this is if we have a wheel here um, and I have all the binary numbers written down from 0 to what would be 15, um, and we'll use one of the bits to indicate the sign. Um, so we'll use signed numbers here. And say I'm going to make this bit here be the sign bit. If that bit is 0, the number is positive. If that bit's 1, the number um, is negative. So if we do that, you can just go through and say, okay, this would be 0, this would be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7. Um, and we, you get to here, we have 0, 0, 0, which is 0, except for the 1. So we have minus 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, and minus 7. Um, so at first it seems like it's a pretty easy way to do it, because we just use one bit to mean positive or negative. That's simple enough. But... There's some oddities here. Uh, first of all, you'll notice there's positive and negative zero, um, which doesn't make a lot of sense. The second thing is that if I do an example, so I'm using this representation, and let's just do some use some normal binary math, and it doesn't make any sense at all. So if I have minus five, um, which I said was represented by this sign bit, and then five, um, and I add positive 1, obviously I expect a result somehow of minus 4, but if you just add them together using regular addition, um, you get minus 6, so that can't be right. Similarly, if you just add two negatives, which you say, well, okay, maybe there's something weird because one's minus, one's positive, but even the act of adding two negatives doesn't even work out as you expect it to. Um, so what this means is that it's not very efficient in computers because you have to deal with all these different cases. You have to have one addition circuit that works if n both numbers are positive. Um, so you'll have one circuit there. You'll have another circuit working if both numbers are negative, uh, such as this. Obviously, we can't use the same addition we're using here. And then you have to deal with cases where one's negative, one's positive. So. It's just not not a good way of doing it. Um, and to sort of get us into what we use, you may have a question of where did zero come from? Here there's two zeros. Why do we have one zero? Why not two? Why not positive negative zero? Um, and the idea of zeros, there's actually a pretty interesting book all about zeros and where it came from. Um, but one of the real first, um, in history, first kind of written records of this and with a lot of thought put into it, was in India um, in 628 AD. And here, many of the rules that you would know as being elementary exist, um, you know, but originally these were not so obvious. So here, a sum of zero and a negative number is uh, negative. So zero, when we add the negative number, you expect it to be negative. Um, zero and a positive number is positive. Zero plus zero, you expect to be zero. So again, this is an issue because if you add these two up, um, you'll get positive zero, negative zero, and then negative zero. So why is there two? What, which one is important here? Um, and this final point he had brought out is the critical one that really underlies what we're going to do next. The sum of a positive and a negative is their difference. So rather than doing subtraction, we're just going to add negatives. Um, and there's a reason we'll do this that will sort of become apparent in a bit. But to really see how it works, we have to talk about 
complementary numbers. Um, and so complementary numbers aren't numbers that are nice to you or anything. It's a mathematical term, and we'll talk about um, the radix. Do I have it? Yeah, the diminished radix complement first. And this is, say, in decimal. So decimal, um, the radix is equal to 10, uh, base 10. So the diminished radix is just 10 minus 1. Um, so the radix minus 1. So for decimal, diminished radix complement is 9. Uh, so when we want to use the diminished radix complement type math, what this means is we want to add, um, we want to do subtraction with addition. So say I have an example here of, say I have 543, um, and I want to subtract 273. And where some of this actually came about is that sort of back when people were not as strong in math, doing this sort of subtraction meant a lot more borrowing and there's a lot more chance for error. So especially as numbers got larger and if merchants want to do this quickly, um, you need a more reliable way of doing it. And people are pretty good at the idea of adding and carrying. That seems more intuitive um, to you when you're just going through it. So we use the diminished radix complement to do this subtraction. Um, so to do it, the first step is we... Uh, we get the the complement, so the nine nines complement because it's diminished radius of that negative number. Um, so the number that we're subtracting here. When we say we're going to add, what we want to do is add this. Um, so we get the nines complement of it. So to get the 9's complement, all you do is subtract 9 from each digit. So we'll go 9, 9, 9, and we'll subtract out um, 273. And what you're left with is 726. Um, so 9 minus 3, 6, 9 minus 7, 2, 9 minus 2 is 7. So this is the nines complement of um, 273, negative 273. Or, yeah, nines complement of 273, sorry, not negative. Um, so the next step is then to add to 543 um, this... 9's complement, or, no, one second. Yeah, add to it the 9's complement here. So we'll go 5, 4, 3, plus 7, 2, 6. Um, and we'll just do this as a regular addition. So the result is 6 plus 3 is 9, 4 plus 2 is 6, and then 5 plus 7 is 12. Um, there's a little bit of a trick when we're using the diminished radix complement, so the nines complement, is that we have to take this one down um, and add it here, and then add it in. So then we get two six nine plus one. Um, so if there, if something ends up there, you have to add it back in to the rightmost digit. So that equals two seven zero. Um, which is the same as if we just did the subtraction in our original case. So using, without using boros, um, we can use the diminished radix complement, the nines complement, to do subtraction. So we'll use, we can use this with um, binary systems. So binary is base 2, the diminished radix complement would be the ones complement. But there's an even easier way to some degree, and that is that remember I said we had this we had this issue here where we have to get this one um, and take it over. So we can use the radix complement. So for a decimal, this would be the tens complement, say decimal um, equal. And again for binary, we'll have what's called the twos complement. So 
I'll show you the example for tens first, and then we'll have a few more examples. Um, so for the tens complement, instead of subtracting nine from each uh, number, we subtract basically in this example a thousand, so ten to the power number of digits from the whole thing. So I had the example of what was it? Five four three minus two seven three. Um, so to do this, we will get the tens complement of this. So the tens complement means 10 to the power of 3 minus um, 273. So equals 1,000 minus 273. So the disadvantage of this system um, is that when we initially do this, you'll notice you do have a bore, which seems like you just kind of, you're trying to avoid it all. But here it's slightly simpler. Um, and that obviously what you're going to end up with here is that you'll be borrowing from all of these and you'll get 9, 9, 10. So you'll notice it's basically the result here, the tens complement or the radix complement is the diminished radix complement plus 1 um, because we have 10 here instead of 9. So this will work out to uh, 2, oops, 7. 727. So before I had 726, here it's 727. Um, just erase that. So in the same way, we can then um, just use addition to get this answer. So we then go 543 plus 727. Um, and this will give us 1270. So with radix complement math, uh, what we need to do is we need to ignore the resulting carry um, because when we added this, we had 5 plus 7 uh, results in 12. So it's greater than 10, so we would have a carry of 1. Um, but there's all zeros here, so we would just write it down. So you ignore that, um, and the answer you get is 270. And the other thing when we're using radix complement is that we can have the case where, in this case, it seems kind of nice and seems like maybe I've cheated because I have a large number minus a small number and the result has been as expected. But we can do this with a small number minus a large number. And what you'll end up with is that the result is in the radix complement format. So, um, for example, if I do, I don't know, well, I can just do the opposite. 7 to 6, um, oops, that's not what I was using. I'll do the exact opposite of what I was using. Um, and 2, 7, 3, sorry about that, minus 5, 4, 3. So, in the same fashion, we'll um, take the tens complement of this number. So, we'll go 1,000 minus 543. Um, and in the same fashion, we'll borrow. We'll end up with 9 here and 10 there. Uh, so, we want to get the tens complement. So, 10 minus 3. 7. So we have 4, 5, 7 is the tens complement of, um, of this number. So then again, the next step is to add. Add the tens complement to the original. And that's this is how we're doing this subtraction. Um, so we'll end up with 10. Um, so we're, we've ended up with 730 here. So obviously we know the answer is supposed to be negative um, because 
273 minus 543 should give us some sort of negative number. So when we do this addition, we need, uh, we need to keep track of that, the fact it should be negative, and we convert this number um, back using the same type of subtraction, um, and we'll get the result. So I'm just going to cheat and do this fast. So it gives us minus, or it gives us 270, um, and again we know it should be negative, so negative 270. And we just add that in because we know the result here uh, is in tens complement format. So then we convert to decimal. So that's how you can do subtraction without doing any serious subtraction and mostly doing it in addition format. Um, so for decimal, it might not seem as important, but yeah? Yeah, actually, so if you, if you do it every time, I guess that's a good point. It will... Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I can't guarantee because I haven't checked every time, but it should. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about the radix complement, here we were talking about the tens complement. So with binary, we have instead the twos complement. Um, so the twos complement, let me just see, uh, is the form we'll use to do the same sort of subtraction. So with the twos complement, it's the exact same idea. We want to do subtraction, but rather than subtracting and using the borer, we'll just add. Um, the advantage of this is not only on us to make life a little easier, but when we're designing a computer, we just need an adder block. If you... Um, if you can do it in this format and you can generate the twos complement efficiently, you can just add everything. Uh, you just convert everything into the proper format before and convert it coming out of the adder block as needed. As it works out, that is, in fact, true. It's a lot easier to do the conversion. Uh, so the, the size of having logic to convert to twos complement and then one adder is smaller than having the logic to do an adder and subtractor. Um, so there's a few ways to form a two's complement. As I had said before, um, we noticed that the diminished radix complement, in this case, was 726. And um, when we form the radix complement, it's in fact just 1 plus the diminished radix complement. So the two's complement, you can form by getting the one's complement and then adding 1 to it in binary. And to get the ones complement, um, with the, the nines complement, for example, you do 999 minus whatever it is. Um, so for the ones complement, the diminished one, we'll just go 111 minus whatever your binary number is. Um, and the way this works out is that you're effectively inverting a bit, because if you have 1 minus 0 equals 1, if you have 1 minus 1, uh, it equals zero. So sort of the fastest way forward is just to think, okay, well, all I do is invert each single bit. So you simply write the inverse. So zero becomes a one, one becomes a zero. No, so we're not doing that yet. So this is, in general, just if you have any number to convert it. This is just the, the style we use. Um, so then you just add 1 to it, and the result is then the 2's complement. So this is 1's, and this will be 2's. Um, so again, we use the binary addition. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. And then the rest of them are just 
written as DAB. So that's how you can generate the two's complement um, of a binary number. So you'll notice, for example, in your assignment, you're asked, um, do the addition using the two's complement of this negative number. So when you, what that is saying is just if the number is, you know, minus 83, convert 83 to binary, um, and you get whatever you get, and then use this type of uh, method to get the two's complement of it. Um, and if, so there's 10 bits here. Um, and for example, if you had to create the 16-bit two's complement, the one thing that's important to remember is that you have, in fact, extra zero bits here um, that may or may not be written in this case. So I've only written 10 bits. If I am asked to create the 16-bit two's complement, you have to remember these zeros will actually have been inverted then. Um, so you'll have to then append, and they become ones, so then you have to add the extra ones in. Um, so there it's just written out in slide form. Again, I'll put these slides online. And the second way um, that we can do it is, oh, actually before I go into the second way, there's a bit of notation we'll be using. Uh, when we have these bits, we have a bit that has the smallest value. So this has a bit value of one. Um, and this bit, which when we are writing them out, will be on the right-hand side of you. We'll call it the least significant bit. Um, or LSB. Likewise, the bit that has the highest value assigned with it, um, so in this case, this bit has a value of 128 because it's a 7-bit number. Uh, if it's 8 bits, it'll be, you know, 256, et cetera. Um, and this one, we're calling the MSB for most significant bit. Um, so when we're using it, that'll always be on the left-hand side. And that's fairly common to have this type of notation where the least significant bit is the right, most is the left. Um, it's not guaranteed for all computer systems. It depends which way you're representing stuff, though. Uh, for this class, you can count on it being in that direction. So when we want to form the twos complement, there's a bit of a shortcut if you don't even want to do the addition. Um, and that is that you, starting at the least significant bit, so starting here, um, you just start inverting bits and you write them down in inverted form until you get to your first one. Um, so I write this as one. I write this as one. And the first one, we write, um, I believe inverted, let me just check. Yeah, so the one we write as is. Um, actually, I think I did that backwards. Yeah. Yeah, these are, sorry, these are, you copy them as is at the beginning. I always forget. Um, you copy those as is, and the rest you invert. So you copy the first bits up to that first one, including the first one as is, and then you invert the rest. And that's the twos complement form. Uh, again, I, it's a little bit faster if you remember the procedure properly. If not, you can just invert them and add one. I find that's more reliable. Um, so that's a bit of a fast way. So there's the procedure written down. Um, so a few more examples of that I'll just show you. Um, so if we use the fast method, we would just 
copy this as is, copy zero. The first one we'll copy as is. Um, and the rest of them we now invert. Uh, so zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. Um, and that should give you the same result. So this is method number two. If you check it with method number one, which is to invert all of them, and then to add one. Um, so if I, if we invert all of them, and then just add one to it. Um, and that'll give you zero, carry the one, one. And you can see how it ends up working out the same. Uh, and if the first bit is a one with method number two, as we said before, all you do is you start copying. When you hit your first one, copy it as is, and then invert the rest. So if the first bit's a one, you still copy it as is, and then everything else here gets inverted. Um, so that's as is, and then these are inverted. And again, if you do it using method, the first method, it end up the same results. Um, so those examples, um, I'll give you a few more sort of examples of, as you'll see it. So say you had the number um, negative. 274. Um, and you want to convert to 16-bit twos complement form. So to do this, we would first convert 274 to binary. Um, so 274 in binary. Um, again, we can use the procedure of drawing down the value of each bit position. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Um, and the next bit position will actually be 512. So we won't use it. So 1, um, there, so 274 minus 256 give us 18. Um, so we'll put have all zeros until we get here. 18 minus 16 will give us 2, so then we'll put all zeros, a 1 in the 2 position, and then 0. Um, so that's the number, just the positive version of the number written in binary. As I said before, we want the 16-bit twos complement, so you have to write this out with all 16 bits. So I'll do it in two bytes, so two groups of eight. Um, so we'll write 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Oh, yeah. um, and then this is 1, and then four more zeros. So this should give us... 16 digits. Um, and then you form the twos complement of that number. So that's the 16 bit number. And then we'll form the twos complement of that using whichever method you want. I'll just use the second one here. So I copy those two as is and then invert the rest. Um, so then you have the two's complement of it in 16-bit form. Pardon? Uh, negative. So that's if it's negative 274. So what I'm showing is we're just converting the positive um, here. And I'll sort of show how these negatives, the positives, are going to play into this two's complement form. It's not just, you know, if you just arbitrarily converted everything 
It would just seem useless. So I have that same number wheel as before, and uh, we have that same system. We want to, or we want to use some system to map all the possible numbers onto this. So for positive numbers, I'm again going to start at zero here, um, and we'll have binary one, binary two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, what we're using is that um, leftmost, the most significant bit is going to indicate the sign. Um, so you'll notice all the positive numbers, this bit zero. But what we're going to do differently is that um, we're not just going to use the sign bit to mean, okay, when the sign bit's one, you just take the rest and that's it. We're going to use it, the two's complement format. So if we have, we go seven, this becomes now minus eight, minus seven, Minus six, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, and minus one. Um, so what this is meaning is that, for example, before this would have been minus seven. Um, now it's almost. It seems like when you look at it, the opposite because it's minus one. Um, and why this is is because this number wheel is actually in two's complement format. And the huge advantage of using this number system is that basically our life will become much, much easier now. Because rather, as I said, rather than needing a subtractor, um, you can just add numbers. So I'll clear this. Yep, so only if the sign bit is 1. Sorry, that's a good point. Only the negatives are 2's complement. Um, you'll notice. So these are just regular. The positive side is just normal. Um, and where this all comes back to is when I had showed you in the first uh, slide, or not the first slide, but when I had showed you using the radix complement form, how we do it is we only convert um, one of the numbers into two's complement format. In this case, it was sort of the negative that we were converting. Um, so as a few examples, I'll show you why this is good. So say, um, I don't know, say if you want to add, again, anything positive will work as expected. But if we do something like 4, positive 4 plus, um, negative one. Uh, from the number wheel we see four is just the normal binary four and negative one is this two's complement format. Um, so negative one or four plus minus one which is the same thing again if the computer was doing four minus one it would just convert it to this format. Or if it was doing four minus minus one um, the logic knows to convert minus the positive. So minus 1 is 1, 1, 1. So if we have 0, 1, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, 1, 1, 0. Carry the 1, 1, 1, 0. And then what you end up with is, as before, when we were doing the complement form, we have an extra carry. Um, and as before, we just discard it. So what this is is equal to 3, which is what the expected result is. So using this number wheel format, or using this 2's complement format, sorry, um, we can do addition by just adding numbers up, or subtraction by just adding numbers up. You don't have to worry about is one negative, is one positive, which way is it, because it will always just work using this. Um, so this format we call the signed twos complement format. Um, again, the sign because we're using the sign bit. And this is um, this format is what's used basically by any integer representation of numbers in computers. Uh, so if you're programming in C and you just have an int, um, 
it's using sine two's complement format in the actual bit representation of it in the computer. Um, so that's all the actual material for today. I'll go through a quick review again. There's a, there is a lot more again in both the, the course notes from the website. Um, so I can show you quickly. Uh, a negative number in like show if uh, like a large negative number that that it's signed or show um, so when when we're doing the um, when we're using the sign to use complement format basically the uppermost bit will always be one in this format. So how that, why that comes about is that, um, for example, we're using four bits here to represent positive and negative. Uh, with four bits, you can represent a total of 16 possible numbers. Um, but we're only, for each half of it, we're only using eight. So for the, for the negative numbers, we're actually only, we have eight numbers which you can represent in three bits. So three bits can represent eight. Um, the extra bit is the sign bit, basically. So we have three numbers representing the number, um, or, th or three bits would be enough to represent the number, and the extra bit we're using as the sign bit. But the, the way it's used, you can always just consider it, add it in the choose complement format, because if the bit was zero originally and two's complement, it'll become one. Like if we have, um, you know, if you have zero, zero, one, zero, whatever. Um, so say you're trying to represent negative two in two's complement format. Um, so that this two. Uh, is effectively that in binary, 0, 1, 0. Um, when we take the 2's complement of it, we write that down, 0, 1, um, and then this becomes the inverse, so 1. And you can either consider it that you're setting the sign bit to 1 because it's a negative number. Um, or, and this is the, the advantage of 2's complement, it actually doesn't matter because if you just consider this bit as any old bit and you just keep applying the same algorithm, it will be inverted um, because two's complement will be telling you to invert it, and so it becomes one. Um, so with with the two's complement, you effectively always know if the most significant bit is set, it's negative. Uh, so if you're dealing with positive 2, uh, with this representation, with positive 2, we don't use 2's complement format. So with positive 2, if the bit's cleared, it's just straight binary, effectively. Um, it's, yeah, so sorry. In, the assignment is sort of asking you to do, do the addition like a computer would do it, which is to say if it's a positive number, um, you just use it like this. So as an example, um, if we have a positive number of, you know, like 1, 123 plus, I don't know, 12. So even if the assignment says use the two's complement style um, of writing it, both of these numbers are positive. So you actually don't need to complement them at all. All it's saying is that um, you're using this type of representation, which could deal with negative numbers if needed. If both of them are positive, then you don't care. It's just a normal binary addition. Um, does that make sense? Or was there? It's just asking you, it's, it just gives you one number to actually find the sign to complement the addition. So that just, you just bring it down like it. Yeah, so the, the 8 bit sign to's complement notation of a positive number. Is the binary, yeah. It's kind of a trick because it's just letting you think about that with the signed two's bit complement, you have the sign bit if the sign bit is zero because the number is positive. Um, 
then that just becomes a regular binary number. So it's only negative that we apply this two's complement to. Any other questions? Or? Okay, well, we'll go through a really quick summary. Um, so adding in binary is the same as before. You just add each number up and then add the carry if needed. Um, oops, that's subtracting. Uh, subtracting in binary, again, very similar to subtracting in decimal. You just subtract each one. If you need to borrow, um, you borrow from the next digit over. Remembering when you borrow, we're dealing with binary, so it's equivalent to a 2. So when you have this borrow, for example, I put a 1 here, 1, 0, it's not 10 minus 1, it's 2, effectively. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Um, so when you have 0 minus 1, you'll end up with 1 written down here and a borrow having occurred. Um, negative numbers are a little trickier to represent because the basic system we've been talking about is only positive numbers. Uh, positive numbers we also will call unsigned because there's no sign bit or there's no sign representation. The simplest representation um, ends up not working very well where we just use one bit to indicate positive or negative because we have two zeros and you need fairly complicated circuitry to do addition. Um, that critical point that we just want one zero uh, will also lead us to some other interesting um, ideas and one of them being that when we want to do addition or subtraction we can just do addition with the negative. And to do addition with the negative we'll use complementary uh, math or complementary system. So there's the diminished radix complement which if it's a base r is just r minus one um, so if it's base 10, it's a 9's complement of the number. And to get the diminished radix complement, uh, we were showing that, for example, to get the 9's complement, you just subtract 9 from each of the numbers. The advantage of this diminished radix complement is that to do the subtraction um, or addition of a negative number, all you do is you find the complement, which won't need a borrow, and then you add the two together, uh, which is just using addition, which is a lot simpler. Um, so it's handy because you only ever need to really know addition and some basic subtraction. Um, the disadvantage of the diminished radius complement is we have to remember to add in the one at the end, or that if there is this extra carry. Um, so instead, we'll use the uh, radius complement of it. And with the radius complement, this is meaning to get, the, for example, to get the tens complement of this number, uh, we subtract it from 10 to the power of 3, in this case, or 10,000 minus this gives you that. Um, and then you can add that. So this seems all kind of useless for decimal because you're okay at subtracting in decimal. But where the power of this really lies is that when we use it with binary number systems. So why we really, really do care about this is the idea of this twos complement. Um, and the twos complement is handy because it means that to subtract two numbers, all you really need is an adder. So you can add the negative of it. Um, and to have this negative representation, we're again going to use this idea that to perform this subtraction, uh, we instead convert this number to tens complement and then the tens complement gets added. Um, so to create the twos complement in binary, you can just create the ones complement, and the ones complement is just invert every single bit, and then use binary addition and add one. Um, so that's the most straightforward method to get the twos complement. Um, so there's the instructions written out. Alternatively, you can use the form where you, starting at the least significant bit, this bit here, um, you start copying everything down until you reach the first one. Once you reach the first one, um, you invert the rest of the bits beyond that. So whichever method you want, both are fine. So the least significant bit 
is the bit that carries the least value in this binary system, value one. The most significant bit um, is the one with the most value. So for this seven bit number, it's the, it has the value of 128. Um, so a few examples of forming the twos complement um, using both methods. And both methods should end up the same, so you can always use two of them to check. Um, so based on this, we create a much better number wheel. And this is the sign twos complement notation that we'll be using and most computers will be using. So in the sign twos complement notation, um, and you know you can you can just have positive numbers and sign. Sign doesn't mean it has to be negative. It just means it's capable of representing positive and negative systems. Um, so we use this top bit, um, the most significant bit, to indicate sign. So this bit, if it's one, become the number is negative. If it's zero, the number is positive. Um, so for positive numbers. It's just straight binary, so to speak, in that it's how you would normally convert it. Um, it's probably pretty illegible, but well. So here, for example, positive, and we consider zero with the sign bit clear. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, once we get into negatives, we'll now be using two's complement format. So this becomes negative eight in two's complement. Negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, three, two, negative one. Um, and this format's great because you can just add them together and it will work. So you can add, um, you know, negative six plus two using just regular binary math. So you can go zero zero one zero plus one zero one zero. Um, and what this ends up with is 1100. Zero, zero. And if we convert this back, so from 2's complement, we need to convert it to regular binary. Um, what we'll expect to get is minus 4. So you can see from the number wheel it is, but just to give you an example, I'll convert it by first inverting everything. So 0, 0, 1, 1. So this is 1's comp. Um, and then I'll add one, and oops, not two. Sorry, I'm going from two's complement to regular, and then I'll end up with four, which is what I expected. Of course, when you're doing this, remember that you have to keep track of the sign, sort of yourself in this case. So here. It's actually, it is minus four, but I've converted it from the negative to the positive side here. Um, so it shows that the math is working as we expect it to do. So that's the advantage of this signed two's complement format that we're using. Um, and again, yeah, if you want to see more, there's some of the references. And I'll try to post these slides later today. Any questions? Or?